thank you for introducing me uh, and thank you organizing committee especially uh, mayur uh, today uh, i have given a very interesting topic that we are uh, dealing uh, in day to day practice that is a some special situation like uh, urinary tract infection it's so so you know uh, when a patient of a diabetic develop some complication so one of the important uh, situation either it may be acute or it may be a chronic there are some of the scenario seen in diabetic and they usually comes with the hyperglycemia like uh, or some complication like diabetic uh, ketosis and during that time they develop some complication secondly many of them they may have a, a infection which lead to the hyperglycemia so it is a vice versa some of them they may comes with the significant uh, complication like uh, urinary tract infection or other infection uh, diabetic itself is a condition which responsible for many complication and uh, infection is one where many infection we can see during uh, our day to day practice so one of the complication uh, which is very uh, common is the urinary tract infection that we are seeing in uh, diabetic so it is uh, very common and it is usually seen in patient who are poorly regulated and not only the urinary tract infection there are many more uh, infection like uh, we can see infection in the eyes ear uh, respiratory tract infection especially uh, during these days when the the covid is still uh, prominent although many of them they have a negative report but many of them they are diabetic and they have a worse outcome also when they are suffering from the diabetes so so uti is the one of the uh, important uh, and uh, life threatening uh, uh, complication many of them they may comes with a very very uh, unique uh, complication like uh, they may comes with the mucormycosis especially during the period of uh, covid we have seen many patient of mucormycosis in our, our, our ward and commonly in a diabetic what we are seeing is the candidiasis we are seeing the cellulitis especially of the limbs and uh, definitely not only the covid the other pneumonia is also very common in diabetes apart from that rarely we are seeing the emphysematous cholecystitis many of them they comes in a in a life threatening situation acute cholecystitis many of them they may acanthus cholecystitis with the sepsis but there are infection which are only only seen with the diabetic one is the malignant otitis externa and apart from that in the urinary tract there is pyelonephritis fornia's gangrene and many more other infection they are unique to the the diabetes but right term of urinary tract infection and diabetes many of them they only have a symptomatic uh, bacteriuria symptomatic bacteriuria really they need uh, proper attention and uh, most of them it is usually seen when there is a high glucose concentration that is the one which responsible for colonization of this organism so high glucose concentration is the favorable uh into your atmosphere for many of the organism the most common organism which responds is the e coli which totally and totally dependent on the glucose and uh, there are various uh, mechanism which responsible uh, for that we are going to discuss in the next now uh, if we see age and gender wise uh, is the age increases its uh, prevalence and incidence is uh, increasing especially with always we think of it is a disease of women but after the age of uh, 52 or 53 when the men developing a prostatitis or benign prostatic hypertrophy then uh, uh, the males also coming with the high prevalence and high incidence of urinary tract infection in diabetes so so as the age increases the prevalence of the uti is also increases especially in the women but in the post menopausal lady also they have a high prevalence of the the uti in one study they have found only uh, 6% of non diabetic women are suffering from 
uh, this UTI, while 26 percent of the women who are suffering from diabetic, they are developing diabetes and they, uh, sorry, UTI. And there is a recurrence in a one year, two or three episodes are commonly seen of the UTI. And recently, the, the drugs also responsible for the UTI in uh, postmenopausal ladies. Now, uh, what are the risk factors uh, for UTI? So, one, uh, it, is a, it is in the diabetic as well as in the non-diabetic. The, the indwelling follies catheter, many of uh, our patients, they remain on follies catheterization Sometimes they come with the obstructive uropathy, antibiotic use. So rational use is uh, mandatory in all patients. Then spermicides that respond to the irritation and attachment to the sites of mucosal, bladder uh, uh, mucosa. And uh, the E. coli is the one which uh, has a very good attachment with the, the mucosa. Then apart from the behavioral pattern, if a person have a frequent sexual intercourse, are susceptible to develop. Then, if a patient of a diabetic who develop autonomic neuropathy, then they may have a voiding dysfunction, which lead to the cystopathy, and that may be the one risk factor. <coughs> Excuse me. Then, very important is the vagico ureter reflex, the retrograde infection, which is usually a very common phenomena in a diabetic patient. In the pregnancy, because of the pregnancy, it is compressing the urinary bladder and ureter. That may lead to the obstruction and that is the floor for bacterial growth. On, in a normal individual, there are certain defense mechanisms like if urine is acidic, if they have a good uh, urinary osmolar, very high osmolarity, in that case, the chances of growth of this organism are very high. There are some of the substances. There are the, some uh, peptides which uh, are responsible for the reduction of your, the bacterial adherence to the mucosa. So, so these are the important uh, host defense. There are some mucopolar secrites. There are uh, mucosal immunoglobin A. And in main, there are some uh, bactericidal zinc and urethral secretion. Uh, sorry. Yes, So, uh, there are anti peptides and protein. They are responsible. So, this is the important host defense. If this is the failure of these anti peptides in the urinary bladder, uh, you can see in the right side of the picture, the E. coli is ascending and it is being destroyed by the, some insulin-dependent amino peptides and they destroy in, uh, these uh, uropathogens, that is a E. coli in the urinary bladder. But if there is a, some defect in the immune system, this uh, uropathogenic E. coli, they enter into the collecting that they ascend and they, then they are beach in the continuity and they may be responsible for the infiltration of this uropathogenic E. coli. So these are the important antimicrobial peptides which protect the urinary bladders, collecting the system and clinic from the direct infection. Hmm? Next. So we'll control the So this was the so so I I already pointed out how this organism ascends. So one mechanism is amino peptides. There are different peptides. There are first, what is the steps? The first is that this organism enter into the urethra and then they ascends. Then what, how uh, this, uh, there are this uh, organism, their fibria allow bladder epithelium cell attachment and subsequently penetration. So all depend on the immune system. After uh, penetration of this organism, they replicate and they form biofilms in the urinary bladder. And then subsequently there is an ascension. The, the organism ascends into the ureter and subsequently into the kidney. That is responsible for the pyelonephritis. So that is an infection of 
renal parenchyma and there are cascade of inflammation which lead to the acute kidney injury next so so there are problem in the immune system either it may be humoral there may be cellular or there may be immunity that may be responsible now what are the organism you must know the organism because in subsequently we have to give a specific treatment for specific organism there is a specific antibiotic also so it is uh, important we have to culture the urine and then uh, then we must know which organism is responsible so outrightly the uh, the e coli is the number one organism which is responsible for the urinary tract infection subsequently the klebsiella pseudomonas they uh, and they are the they are the organism which responsible for the life threatening with a worse outcome in uh, complication in diabetes patient the the gram positive organism is also responsible for the the um, uti that is alpha streptococci or strep aureus they may be also responsible for uti so common one is the e coli so these are the mechanism the glycosuria which responsible for the which providing the beads for this are then then increase uh, adherence uh, to the epithelial cells so, so the uropitin is having a very important prop property of flexibility by which it will allow filling and emptying of the bladder at the same time it is impermeable to flow and is able to cope with the varying ph osmolarity and various toxic substances like high ammonia level so in the pathogenesis if this uropathogen responsible for adherence then sometimes the there are some substances like adesin is responsible which adhere to the uro epithelium and then there are other uh, substances like uroplakins uh the glycolipids they are responsible for adherence of uh, this organism then immune dis dysfunction either humoral or cell mediated immunity uh in the cell mediated immunity they affect the polymyelin leukocyte function and uh, phagos the, the phagocytosis is affected the chemotaxis is also affected so so there are many uh, uh system which affect by this organism apart from that if you see there is a lower urinary concentration in the a and the c in women and who are suffering with diabetes they may be the responsible which is responsible for the lower urinary wb count and which lead to the adherence to this organism to the bladder or ureter apart from that uh, there are various studies which has shown the ac2 inhibitor may be the one uh, factor one drugs which may be responsible for the genital infection or ureteric infection but there there are a scientific report which is published in the nature where they they showed uh, it required a long uh, uh, analysis then we can say the adjunct inhibitor may be the responsible for uh, urinary infection but uh, after post menopause there are studies where they clearly mentioned there are genital infection there are urinary infection so right now there are no uh, data or meta analysis which uh, reveal the the sgt inhibitor is definitely responsible for the genital infection or urinary infection now uh, if you see the spectrum of uh, urinary tract infection it varies from the asymptomatic bacteria yeah. it is more common in a uh, diabetic women as compared to non diabetic women where patient do not have any symptom but the bacteria is bacteria are there so <clears throat> but we should not treat until less the patient become symptomatic so what are the symptoms that and the, what is the spectrum they may have a infection in the the urinary bladder because of the autonomic neuropathy autonomic cystopathy that may be responsible then the infection may uh, ascend into the into the, the kidney where it may be a complicated or it may be uncomplicated pyelonephritis so what are the symptom in uh, mostly most of our patient they comes with the burning so the burning micturition is the most common symptom then they may have a urgency they may have a cloudy urine sometimes they may comes with the, uh, so the sorry red to urine last one minute okay 
so these are the uh, symptoms of urinary when we have to suspect if first of all the the first and foremost diagnostic way of urinary tract infection is the microscopic examination if a microscopic examination is positive we must go for the urine culture that is another way by which we can confirm if patient may have a uh, symptoms which pertain to cystitis means they may have a suprapubic pain we can suspect if some patient comes with the costovertebral angle pain we can suspect pyelonephritis so emphysematous pyelonephritis is a severe necrotizing form of bacterial nephritis nephritis which responsible the gives formation within the parenchyma of the the kidney in this picture you can see that there is a translucent uh, picture which is surrounding and there is a response of the inflammation of the kidney so so this is a classical uh, uh, picture of empyseometrous pyelonephritis which is a unique to the diabetic yeah this is ultrasound where you can see ultrasound where you can see there is the gas bubbles so radiological diagnosis ct scan ultrasound may reveal the complicated pyelonephritis so in this picture you can see there are gases this is another complication perinephric abscess just outside of the kidney you can see a abscess that is another complication in this picture you can see there is a renal papillary necrosis so th these are the life threatening for that we have to do ct scan and clearly we can see the so diagnosis is based on the microscopic examination there are typistic tests there are we can see the colonization and as far as the management is concerned on the basis of presence of symptoms any severe complication go from this slide so if patient is asymptomatic either men or women we should not give any treatment but patient who comes with a simple urethritis or cystitis the first line therapy is nortofurantine fosfomycin trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole and if it is a complicated in that case we can do a add on therapy with a cefuroxime you know in a woman we can add a quinoline quinoline amino glycoside if it is complicated pyelonephritis the piperacillin tazobactam atapenem are amino glycoside to be added means patient must be hospitalized and to be started with a injectable therapy and for a longer period so hospitalization is required we start with the blood stack antibiotic so in the last is one of the common complication which we are seeing in the diabetic patient so we must get intensity regularly every three months or every six months if it is very high ask them to control it so make them due glycemic and uh, uti a uh, simple uti may lead to the worse outcome if the, the patient is not due glycemic so antibiotic yeah, antibiotic are very specific uh, most common organism e coli thank you very much uh